Hey there, all my popcorn peeps. Magic Man Rusty here. Welcome to this live streaming episode of The Magnificent Seven. We're celebrating PopCon Indy's seventh anniversary by spending seven minutes with members of the PopCon family and joining us in the PopCon Corral tonight. One of our virtual PopCon 2020 special guests, an actor whose roles have taken him from the world of sparkly vampires all the way to the final frontier. I'm your host, Rusty Ammerman, and our Magnificent Seven with Michael Welsh begins right now. Of course, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Of course, man. My pleasure. Glad to be here. We are going to be having a blast in Indy. We will be there literally. You will be there figuratively, virtually. So let me tell everybody once again that that panel with you is going to be Saturday the 11th from 6 p.m. to about 6.45 something. I'll be moderating that. It'll be you and Julian and the other Michael. And then you are going to have a meet and greet with fans or the opportunity. They can spend three virtual minutes with you from 7 to 9 p.m. And if they want to sign up for that, they better get on it popcon.us and uh we're gonna have a blast so thanks for being here all right I should so probably write all that down so I, I make sure i'm there on time okay i'll, I'll text you later it's okay, <laughs> okay right, so no uh <laughs> you uh, you are one of i've only met a handful of people that have actually been involved in the star trek universe and i'm i'm a i'm a bit of a trekker here so let me just kind of ask are you yourself a trekkie as well a trekker trekker are you i do consider myself a trekkie um, you know, I certainly not as hardcore, so don't throw trivia at me because I won't be able to answer. Um, so what but, is no, blood type? No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I just I, I have a real appreciation for uh, the whole universe and and for the the passion of that fan base. I you know I I ended up going to my first ever Trek Con in Vegas, probably I don't know, let's call it two years ago, and I sort of thought to myself, gee, I mean. You know, I was I, I sort of had this small part in, in one of the one of the movies like 20 years ago. Like, is anybody even going to care? And you, you would have thought that the movie came out last week. I mean, it was it was really, really remarkable uh, to, to, to be a part of that and to have been a part of that all these years. So it's cute. Morning. I wonder if the Star Trek people would remember me. There's nothing they forget. It's kind of kind of crazy, actually. So when you as a movie goer, what kind of genre do you like? Are you a comedy, thriller, action, suspense? What, what do you kind of what do you go for? You know, uh, well, I mean, in all honesty, since I've had my baby, it's been mostly cartoons. Uh, but that said, um, no, I, I, you know, it, it's interesting. My taste has been, um, I've been really enjoying kind of weird offbeat uh, type of movies lately. Like um, I, I, I checked out The Lighthouse recently, uh, the one with uh, Willem Dafoe and, and Robert yeah. Pattinson which is just out there and wacky and i just i loved it and i love i love stuff like that so yeah if, if i'm gonna sit down and just recreationally watch a film by myself it's it's there's probably there's got to be something a little little strange about it that, that seems to be my sensibility so probably less the mainstream and more like being john malkovich some movie like that something quirky like that yeah and I, listen i have no problem with the mainstream i love the mainstream you know i'm just saying like if if i'm you know, in those moments when I'm like alone and I have the ability to watch a movie by myself. Yeah, I mean, I, I think something interesting, you know, the last movie I saw in theaters, I think was Uncut Gems. I'm like, that is just right up my alley. You know what I okay. mean? So uh, yeah, that, that just Adam, tends to be what I gravitate towards. I don't know why. Adam Sand, let me ask you, did you need to run out and immediately get a Prozac prescription after seeing that movie? <laughs> Guys, so yeah, just, exactly. No. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you haven't seen it, you are intense. I mean, nerves. The in, is is there is there a 30 second period of time when you're not nervous for one of the characters in there? Tell me honestly. No, I I don't believe so. And I think um, you know what's interesting. It, it, it's it's a bit of a um, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a Rorschach test, but in in the the small sample size that I took, I found that men uh, loved that movie who saw it, and women effing hated it <laughs> and i think what that is is like there's there's something about you know as as crazy as this guy's life is you sort of get the appeal uh, i mean when you're when you're living with um you know that level of you know when your adrenaline is, is pumped up to a thousand yeah. all the time i don't know that that there's like there is an appeal to that, uh, even though you don't necessarily want to live that life. It is sort of fun to sort of vicariously live through that character for at least a couple hours, you know. So you, I mean, your heart's beating the whole time, but I, but you sort of like, I don't know. I, I feel like you, you, you get the appeal, and he, and that's what a great movie does anyway. I mean, it, it takes you to a place where you wouldn't normally go, and it shows you like, oh, okay, well, 
I, I want you to understand like how someone can get to a place in their life where they're doing all these seemingly irrational things. And I, I think that movie did that really well. Yeah. And I just, again, speaking generally, I just don't think, um, I just don't think women <laughs> think like that, that at all. I think they just watch it and go, this guy's an idiot. Yeah. And, that, uh, that was my and he everything that's going to happen. Experience as well. Yeah. Uh, and because guys kind of want to fix things and women just kind of want to feel safe and boy, that was not the movie for them at all. It's yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Cannot, I mean, again, it's, it's speaking in generalities, but I, of course, I, of course. yes, yeah. I, uh, I can't wait to do this panel with you. These, these are, this is going to be a great conversation to have there. You're really insightful on this stuff. All right. So, um, when you were a kid, did you want to grow up to be an actor or what did you want to grow up to be? What did you think? Well, um, I started acting professionally when I was 10. So yeah, yeah I, I mean, you know, and it's, it's funny because like, you know, some people, uh, I maybe grow into it. I, for me, if you go back and look at any like home uh, video footage of, of me as an even as a toddler, like all I was doing was just performing or uh, basically just reciting whatever I saw on TV 10 minutes ago, you know, <laughs> even commercials, like it didn't matter. Um, so it seems like it was just kind of a natural fit. And, you know, it's, it's a long story of how it all sort of worked out, but it all happened very, you know, organically. <laughs> where uh, I just sort of like found my way into the industry. And I, and I got to tell you, I mean, in, in all honesty, at the, my very first time on set day one, I was like, yeah, I mean, this is, this is it for me. It's, it was so the you most just fun knew. You ever So you were that kid that would go in his room in front of the mirror and practice product placement just by holding. You just, you had that all figured out. That's great. That's <laughs> hilarious. So exactly. what is, yep. weird question here, what is the grossest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, one time I had, um, <laughs> uh, live octopus now it's not actually alive uh but what happens from my understanding is uh the uh, uh the, the the nerve endings in the in the in the tentacles uh are are still alive by the time they get on your plate so while you're eating it it's like still moving um wouldn't recommend it listen man you asked i, I don't need your yeah head. no no this um, sounds like I, uh, did you lose a bet or what you know what? I was with my buddy uh, Justin Chan, who is in the Twilight movies with me, and we were yeah. hanging out in, uh, 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 you know, downtown, and and he picked the restaurant that day, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and that's that's what we, and, he, and he talked me into it, and I, you know, um, yeah, I it wasn't it wasn't particularly enjoyable. I, I have to no, say. No, no. It sounds like something Klingons would eat, something called gak. Uh, they, they, that really, so you're in the Star Trek universe more than you think. All right. Uh, look at exactly. the timer. We, I could just keep going. I'm sorry. Man, we are out of time. Okay, so, so we've got plenty more time, though. That's going to be happening Saturday the 11th at 6 o'clock. I'll be hosting a, a panel with you and Julian and, and Michael Eklund. And then right afterward, from 7 to 9, you are going to be doing the meet and greets with the fans. And I can tell, uh, I think you're going to have a hard time keeping into those three-minute segments, aren't you? <laughs> I, I, I very much am. I can promise you that. Yes. I can't wait. Thank you so much for being our guest here. We look forward to seeing you very, very soon at PopCon, Virtual PopCon 2020. So until then, my PopCon peeps, live long and prosper.